So this is the unboxing of the Alienware 27. This is the 2724DM. I'm just going to get straight into it and open it because I'm quite excited about actually having using this. This is going to be amazing. Let's just put that knife away. Okay, so it opens inside like that. Wowzers. There's a lot of stuff in here. Open that up like that. And you can see. Wow, there's a lot of stuff. Can we see that okay? No. Yeah. Alright, so let's I'm just gonna take my glasses off so I can see. <laughs> okay, so we've got uh Alienware, there's instructions on how to use it. Which is great, so I'll just put that down there for a second. And there's the energy warning sticker, which we're never gonna use that. Um, oh I don't know where to start. Okay, we've got some cables here, which is brilliant. Uh, so there's a DPI cable, excellent. So uh, there's a HDMI to I'm not sure what cable that is, I'll have to look into that. Um, then there's the uh, oh DPI port to H um, USB C. Excellent. It's all about everything, haven't they? So there's a power cable, obviously, and we've got another little box of treats here. Um, love that Alienware logo on the front there. Oh, this is all the paperwork. Oh wow, this is a really little, brilliant little box. I love that. That's awesome. We're just gonna put that down to the side. This will be the Stand. Oh, it's quite a heavy duty stand. I'll get that open because we're going to need that. Put my laptop where I'm going to put the monitor. Okay. okay. Uh, let's open. There's the stand. Wow, look at that. Yikes. Anywhere. That is awesome. That's amazing. It'd be a shame to put this on an arm because then you're just wiping out everything that they've gone to all that effort to make. Awesome. I'm saying awesome a lot, but I'm quite excited about this and I'm really interested to see what it actually looks like. So there's the plate of the uh, um, base, the base of the arm there. So that screws on there. Oh, it's got a butterfly on there at the bottom, so that's nice and easy to use. NVIDIA G-Sync. Excellent, that's so cool. Alright, so let's get this box off. Over there. Ooh. Wow. That's a beautiful thing. And I'm going to take it out without breaking it. Wowzers. Let me just put that there. So if I've got a quiet, but I don't really want to just chuck the box on the floor and it's going to make a bit of a mess. Right, there we go. Out of the way. All right, so let's... How do we get this out without breaking it? Right over there. Is there a way to hold it? Okay, so we'll just put it on the deck like that. We've ripped that a bit, but it doesn't matter. Okay, wow. That is lovely to look at. Really nice. I mean, I've watched a few videos on this before, but when you actually see it, it's lovely. It's a really nice looking machine. And then uh, that uh, plonks on like that, chink, chink, and then goes on to the base. But I'm just gonna have a quick look at the instructions to make sure I'm doing it right, because I don't want to do it wrong. Let's get the base over here as well. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yep, four cables, got all that. Um, so that, so you put, put it into the base first. And when it goes in one way, you can't get it wrong. Oh, and then we screw that Together. I'm holding it away from the monitor but so again you can see what I'm doing so that's nice and tight fold that over it says lock oh see it's been to lock okay so that's the base and then I mean it's quite self-explanatory what I need to do Clips in there first, and then on the bottom one. 
Oh, and then take out the box. <laughs> Whoops. That would make a lot more sense. But I've done it now. Oh, I didn't even need to force it or anything. It's just gone in there. And now I can lift that up. Do that. Wow. Okay, let's just get rid of these stickers. And that one. So you're going to see it before I do. <laughs> and that one. Yeah. That's an amazing machine. So it does it. Turn, yeah, it turns. It turns, well, it turns enough, doesn't it? And then you can. Oh! Oh, I mean. That is just awesome. You can have it in whatever position you want. And then I guess it does that as well. Yeah, lovely. Wow. Okay, I'll go up and down as well. Oh, yep, yeah, just move it up and down. Oh, <laughs> it's so well engineered. It looks really good. And then let's have a look so you can see the back of it as well. Now these obviously light up. Which, let's plug it in, see what it goes, see how it looks. Do you know what I'll do actually? Um, I will get this set up on the desk and get it cracking with the PS5 and then show you what it's like. I'll see you in a sec. All right, so this is my setup now. I've, got, I've had to change the desk because the original desk I had was too short, too too narrow, just too small all over because, uh, and also the, it didn't have a lip on the front like this has, uh, on the back to clamp the arm onto because I needed an arm because I need to be able to move it. So when I'm sitting down playing the PlayStation on the sofa, um, I need to be able to move the uh, screen like so. So you've got an arm like that and we can move it around all over the place. So I'll put it about there and I can sit on the sofa and play PlayStation, which is amazing. Uh, this arm is actually really, really good. It's really heavy duty. It fits bigger screen than this. This is also which is 27. It could fit a bigger screen and obviously a smaller one. Um, and it goes all over the place. It goes up and down and it tilts and you can also rotate it. Um, yeah, so it's really, really good little screen. Um, <laughs> uh, really good little arm. I really like that arm. Um, if you're interested in seeing it, is, um, check out the affiliate links in the description below and you can see how much it is right now. Okay, so uh, what I've had to do is um, I've had to change the uh, HDMI cable because it's only got one one HDMI cable, sorry, one HDMI port on the back of the monitor and two DP ports. Uh, so I've had to get a different cable. Now the first one I got was not an omnidirectional cable so that only worked the other way around because it needed to be HDMI from the laptop to DP on the monitor. Uh, so the other one I got was the other way around. So you had to get the one with the US, if you're interested in getting one, you have to get the one with the the USB power, although it doesn't need to have the power plugged in to work. So I don't know what that's all about, but it, uh, it works, so that's absolutely fine. Again, check out the description below and I'll leave the links down there for you if you want to check it out. Okay, so uh, it's all set up. There's a um, little knob on the bottom here, so you can go through the menus and stuff and I'll show you that in a second. That's how you access all the different menus. Um, now, when I had the, I had it set on 120 frames per second, so 120 hertz on the PlayStation. But I, you know what? I couldn't really tell any difference. I couldn't, didn't really, didn't really mean anything to me. You know, it does mean something to me, obviously, but uh, it didn't seem anything different than the normal 60 hertz. So, um, but if you put it on 120 hertz, then the um, quality goes down to 1440, which is all right. It's, I mean, it's a, it's a good quality, but I, I'd much rather have better resolution. So I've changed it to 3840, I think, to 2160. And let me just check, because if you press the button here and you go over to input source, and then press it again, then it'll refresh that page. So it's uh, 2560 by 1440, uh, 60 hertz, which is fine because that's all that the monitor can do. Um, I have got a different computer down there, so I'm hoping that I can do a better resolution than that. By the moment, that's okay. So when you put the PlayStation on, we'll just uh, go and do that. 
Um, we need to go and change the channel. For some reason, it doesn't change channel on its own, even though it's on auto. So HDMI. There we go. We've got 3840 by 2160 now, which is, that's 2K. Um, and in my opinion, that's better than 1440 and 1080p. So it looks better. It's a better quality picture. And do you know what? 60 hertz is fine. I mean, you can do it on, on 120 on like Call of Duty. Didn't notice any difference. Interested to see what you guys let, um, think about it. Do you play 120 hertz? Do you actually tell the difference? I can't. Maybe I'm on my own. I don't know. Interested to see what you guys think. So um, I think what we'll do now is uh, I'll show you the setup uh, on the little knob down here. And then we'll have a look at playing some games. Okay, so if you want to scroll through the options, there's a knob under here, so you can press that to the side or in or up or down. So if you do that way, it goes into puts you into night vision. Put it forward again, it goes into clear. Well, there's chroma, and there's a crosshairs, which is really cool. So you go to the left, and then gives you that. So that's the dark stabilizer, so we can go up or down, so make it brighter or darker. I prefer to keep on that one because you want some darkness, but it, that's a bit too bright, I think. Um, so let's get rid of that. And then you go up, you've got lots of different options here. So you can shortcut key, you can put anything you like onto it. Um, there's some information on there. You go to the menu, you can put transparency or how long it stays on the screen for. Um, there's your display options. You can mess around with that. There's lots of different options that you can choose from and including some different smart options. But I've favored to turn it off because that feels like it gives me the best quality. Um, again, let me know in the comments, what do you think? What's the best one to choose if you've got any experience with this monitor or any um, Alienware monitors? Um, so the you can change the colors of the um, lights on the back. I like orange, so I've ch chosen that just to be on orange, or you can change custom, you can, lots of different colors as well. Uh, there's the input source, and there's a brightness and contrast. Um, again, depending on which mode you choose, uh, which smart mode you choose, then they get display different display options. For example, if I do display HDR, and we wait for a second. Um, so now, and where were we? Um, Go up there, so we don't have the brightness and contrast anymore. Um, but it does feel a lot brighter. Uh, so if we go to the input source, no, and press that, it tells us what we're running. So now we've got 2160p, which is less than what I had on just now. It was 300, 3840 by 2160. So interesting. I might keep it on that. See how that goes. Um, you can put game enhancement mode on, which is, it shows you the timer, or you put the refresh uh, frame rate at the top, it shows you the frame rate at the top there, which you can't see because the camera's not in the right place. Let's just go up there. So now you can see the frame rate at the top there. Um, so we'll just go and turn that off now. Because I don't want that on. Uh, and also, display alignment. That all seems to be okay. Okay, so you can see there's quite a lot of different options to mess around with. Um, I'm just gonna turn that crosshair off because I don't want that on. Um, I mean, that's really good for when you're playing um, Modern Warfare, for example, uh, but it's I think it's a bit too big, uh, but it's a really good idea, I really like it. So I think what I'll do is I will have a quick go on Modern Warfare and look, and you let me know what you think. So I'll just put that there. Team Deathmatch. Engage and destroy the enemy. All of them. They shot me! They're visiting the rest. Thanks. 